bright and sunny Saturday morning, sorting out Mr. DeWire's Career 18 again. Again. <laughs> again. Week before Christmas. And here we are, slaving away. Got rust in the uh, poor old centre board. And I've taken it at this angle to show you that either the centre board's got rust under it in places or it was never um, leveled properly in the first place. So we're trying to get the beast out. It won't come out from the bottom. We're going to have to take it out from the top. We've got to get all these bulges of rust sorted out before we can do it. But So we're going along with the saw at present. Just tidying it up so it'll, at least it'll slide up, hopefully. We've got our fingers crossed. Okay, we've pretty well got the keel out. The Toyota Jack works a wonder. We've learned you can't take the keel on a Kareel out through the bottom. You've got to take it out through the top. So we've used different pieces of uh, Merbau, cut, uh, cut down, used the jack, jack the front up, lock it with a clamp and then jack the back up and uh, increase the uh, size of timber until we got him pretty well poked out the top. So we're looking good All right, now. We've got it jacked up pretty well. Now we're going to jack the uh, rear or the bottom of the centre board up a bit more. See if we can get it clear, leave the front of it in. Uh, about a hundred mil and then we'll slide her out and Bob's your uncle okay we're pulling it we're about to pull him out we've got him sitting clear now us uh, and uh, or the bottom of it sitting on a piece of polypropylene slide out the cockpit and we've got a bar through the pivot point and we'll slide her out let's see if it's three old oh well, we got the beast out we got him sitting on the little uh, lifter and boy is it heavy so we manipulated it onto there. We've got a uh, corrosion in the front and there's quite a bit there and I suspect there's corrosion up in this area here too because it's uh, a little uneven and down the, um, from the top as well. So remember, rust grows 16 times the amount of metal it takes off so it looks quite bad but um, that's 16 times thicker than the amount of metal that's taken off. Uh, anyway, we'll be back when we do some more. Okay, we've got the keel out and we're having a bit of a sticky beat. Uh, if you see, that's the stainless steel pin that was in it. That took us six hours to get out. It was locked in that hole there. And we had to drill a series of holes around to um, release it. It just would not come. We are building it with a sledgehammer and a drift locked in. And even the holes, we had to elongate them uh, so that the, the metal would collapse to get that pin out. It um, was absolutely locked in there. The other thing to note here, they've, they've used polyester resin and some chop strand mat over gal. They might as well not have done it. Uh, polyester is a very poor adhesive and it could be part of the reason why this is rusted. You know, the, the waters, salt water's got in and sat underneath the fiberglass and um, wouldn't dry out and it's uh, killed the galvanizing. Um, we're just going to use some U-Beaut epoxy paint, the Aquacoat epoxy paint, to tidy this up. We're not going to put any um, um, coating over this. If, if we were, we'd use epoxy with um, woven mat, but we're not going to do that. Uh, better off just leaving it bare gal. Anyway, we'll get stuck. There we go, Brian's clean on the last stuff. Then I'll start to make it look beautiful. We'll come back and have a look. Yeah, we'll come back and have a look once he gets that grinder to it. Right, the board's been all cleaned up now. There's still a couple of spots to go. Uh, there's a little bit of rust and rounding the corners. They'd never rounded the edges up near the top, and uh, as a result, there were sharp edges. Coatings don't like sharp edges. You'll also see here how it's pulled away. They used uh, polyester resin. To glue it all together. Polyester resin is a very poor adhesive. They should have used epoxy um, because it's an excellent adhesive and it's pretty well waterproof and uh, that's why we've got all this rust. You know there, there's obviously uh, this side in particular that's down at water level so the water's permeated through it because this boat spent quite a lot of time on a mooring so the moisture got in under the polyester and we are able to just peel it off. You can see how it's pulled away even here. But we, we'll um, feed some epoxy in under there and that'll lock it all back together. 
even down around the lead you can see they've drilled this out here and they've used all lead um, and they've filled it all with lead and down here they've left bits of steel in between and these are they've drilled all holes to do this they haven't used an oxy to cut it out they've drilled a whole series of holes so they must have been here for a long time doing it but the rust had even permeated into here and delaminated and, and it had actually bulged. We're wondering why it wasn't sitting well in the case and that's because of all the bulges from the rust. Anyway, we've got it pretty well cleaned up now. Most of the rust off and we're going to glass her all back up and uh, tart it up and whack her back in. You'll notice where our hole was. I've actually drilled a one and a quarter inch hole or about a 32 mil hole here. Uh, what we'll do, we'll um, fill that full of epoxy with graphite in it and uh, then we'll drill a three quarter hole in the guts of it that way it can't corrode, the pin can't lock in again like it did last time and we're going to build all this surface up with epoxy and uh, uh, glass as well where they just had nylon bits of nylon, nylon you shouldn't use nylon where it's going to be submerged in water because when it gets wet it'll swell anyway so it, it was part of the problem so from, from this point here we're going to build this up so it's the same level all the way up to here and uh, we, with uh, epoxy and double bias cloth and that'll really make it nice and solid and take a lot of the problems away also anyway we'll show you next week when we get her all done okay what we've done here we've um, mixed some uh, graphite in with the boat coat and made it into a nice paste because this is a bearing service and it has to be built up so we're using graphite it's a really good lubricant with a, in epoxy uh, so we've now put this down and then we're going to put some peel ply down it, it works really well um, the peel ply over surfaces like this it'll level it out and you can you'll see this one down here you know it was rough like the other one before we put the peel ply on so when we're finished we'll take another little ditty okay where we put the graphite uh, mixed in with the boat coat on before I've now put peel ply over it and she's fairly warm it's already almost green um, so very very warm sitting out in the sun so after lunch we with a bit of luck we'll be able to pull the peel ply off and keep working away so um, we'll go and have a break and go from there so that's peel ply brilliant product I love this stuff. down this end you'll notice we've um, used quite a lot of masking tape and that's to um, hold the peel ply on. Don't be frightened to put some masking tape over the top of the peel ply. It'll work quite well. So here we are. Now uh, we gra put some graphite into our boat coat this morning and uh, build up a layer. This is a bearing surface. Needed to be level with our um, rudder. So we'll build it up. It's dry. You now we've got it sitting out in the sun so the epoxy cooks off fairly fast plus it'll generate its own heat. So you'll see I've already started to peel this off. See how it's come away? So that to pull the, the peel ply off the glass and leaves it with a nice smooth finish. Yeah, if that's fairly level, we won't even need to do any sanding there. We could even epoxy straight over the top of that if we wanted. Uh, it leaves you with a nice finish. Beveled it out, look how look how smooth it's beveled it out. Right, nice, even and smooth. That, that's what peel ply can do for you if you use it right. Okay, we're finished glassing the centerboard now and we're just going around touching up, doing a little bit of fairing to level it off and then we'll sand it. So here, here we've um, put some gluing and filleting filler down with uh, the boat coat and beside it you can see where we've uh, already done it and put peel ply over it. The peel ply helps level it and hold it in position. If you have a look down here you can you can see how it's sagged well by putting the peel ply over it we'll hold that in place and fill it up we'll keep our fingers crossed anyway okay we've uh, ground back or sanded back leveling off we found a spot where there was an air gap underneath so what i've done here i'm using my heat gun and i've um, sped it up so it's gelled it off, it's um, gelled right off and I've got it probably to about 60, 80 degrees C and that really speeds things up so we'll, we'll cure this fairly fast. In actual fact at 80 degrees C 
you, you can have it cured in nine minutes. But be careful because if you heat it above 80 degrees C, you'll actually burn it. So the aim isn't to get it too hot, it's just heat the surrounding area. 40, 50 degrees C is good. Uh, also be careful. Once you heat the epoxy up, it's going to vaporise fairly easily, the chemicals in the hardener, and that's when it's no good for you. So if you're going to do this sort of thing, make sure you're out in the open like we are at present, and don't do it in a confined space because that, it causes the epoxy to vaporise, and that's part of the problem with using old technology epoxies. That's why you can smell the darn things. It's the vapour that's causing the issue when you breathe it in. So we don't want to get it much hotter than that. So we're about to put, okay, some, filler, put some filler on it now. And I'm just giving her a bit more heat. And I'll put some field fly over the top. So we've got our bit here. And I'm not even going to massage that out. I'm just going to put that straight on there. Oh, that's nice and warm. And peel ply, use the peel ply to level it. Pull that around. Oops. So just massage him. Get him nice and level. Oh shit, there's some heat in there. So, and that'll, that'll go off on us in no time. By the time we've had a coffee, that's going to be nicely cured. For the, as hot as that is. Push it down into it, massage it. And that'll fix our stuff up. We hope. That'll do. Ten minutes later, we're able to pull the peel ply off it. And I just hit it with a heat gun and it went soft again. But it, it's almost hard. Well, I just give it a tiz and a, it'll, it'll go soft once you put the heat gun on it. Because epoxy softens at 80 degrees C when it's cured anyway. And we just need this to cool down now and go off a little bit more and we should be able to sand that little bit and we're done. So here we are, our keel. Not looking pretty, I was hoping I could have put copper boat on the thing before it went um, back in the boat, but we've run out of time. It's the 23rd of December and I want it out of here. Well here we are, we've got the uh, centreboard back in. Got a bit of um, Corfu each side to hold it in position and we've glued our pin in. We've used epoxy glue, and the reason I've used epoxy glue is it's fully thixotropic. In other words, where you put it's where it stays, so it mixes easy, one-to-one -one mix, and I've used it to glue the pin in, so the pin's in, in behind here, and we've got him all gooped up, and it won't go anywhere now. Job finished. Another job well done.